We're going to talk about Markov chains today, and um, first thing we're going to do, we're going to go over a couple of the definition, and then we're going to talk about some um, properties of Markov chains, and we're going to go over an example, and then we're going to talk about steady states of Markov chains, and um, go over one more example, and that'll be it. So uh, first of all, definition for a Markov chain is going to be, um, you're going to have a very random variable set of random variables. Uh, x1 to xn. Oop, misspelled that. <laughs> you don't start. <laughs> x1, x2, to, uh, xn, and where you have uh, the probability of xn is j, given that xn minus 1 is k, xn minus 2 is i, dot, 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 dot. All the way down to x1 is equal to v. Equals the probability of x to the n equals j given x n minus 1 equals k. Right? And also that probability of x to the n equals j given x n minus 1 equals k is equivalent to x2 equals j, given that x1 equals k, right? So all this really means, basically, is that um, the probability of something happening down the line has absolutely no effect on the probability of something that happens at the beginning. So if you have, like, um, if, you have, if you have something happens, well, the probabilities aren't going to change because something happens when you're, when you're down the line. That'll make a little bit more sense in a second. So anyway, there are a couple really important properties of Markov chains. Um, the first important property is that every entry in a Markov chain is going to be greater than or equal to zero. And um, it's probability, the Markov chain is a probability matrix, right? So it doesn't make sense to have a negative probability. Um, the second important thing is all the columns add to one. And this is standard. There are actually some cases where Markov chains don't add one, but that gets kind of complicated. And if you notice, eventually it'll end up like self-destructing if they don't add one. So, so for now, we're just going to say they add one. Um, also, all Markov chains have an eigenvalue of one, and all other Markov chain values, or all, not all other Markov chain, all the eigenvalues for the Markov chain all have to be um, abs an absolute value have to be less than or equal to one. And really, there's not going to be a second one unless you have a weird markup, another weird case. Anyway, so these two right here actually implies what's called the steady state. Um, and that's basically saying at some point down the line, after so many iterations of the markup chain, you're going to end up with um, you're going to end up with, uh, with with the same probability every time you use the markup chain. Uh, basically. Uh, the Markov chain breaks down to uh, UK, which is the uh, kth iteration of the Markov chain, right? So the probability vector here is equal to uh, the Markov matrix, which is just going to be your matrix of probabilities, right? We'll just say A equals, oh, I don't know, 0 0.3, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, and 0.2. So that's your Markov matrix, right? It's going to be that matrix, however many iterations you want to do it, times your initial state vector. And that's going to break down into uh, some constant times an eigenvalue times the eigenvalue to the kth power times one of your vectors plus uh, another constant times your next eigenvalue to the kth power x plus da da da. All this stuff doesn't really matter because what's going to happen is if this eigenvalue equals 1 and say this eigenvalue equals 0.5 or whatever, has to be less than 1, if you take the limit, this value is going to go away and all this stuff down the chain is going to be gone and you're going to be left with just this number right here, and that's going to be your steady state. So anyway, so since I've done enough abstract stuff, let's go ahead and do an example real quick. So we're going to go ahead and take a pretty typical case for a Markov chain, and suppose that a company of researchers, or a company hires a bunch of researchers for their brand of cereal or whatever, and they want to see if they buy their brand of cereal one week, what the probability is that they're going to switch to the second brand. So um, let's just assume that they find out that uh, the 
first for brand A, right? If you if you buy brand A the first week, there's a 70% chance that they're going to stick with brand A, and a 30% chance that they're going to stick with brand B. And if they buy brand B, there's a 20% chance they're going to stick with brand B, and an 80% chance that they're going to go with brand A. Or no, 80% chance that they're going to go with brand B, and 20% chance that they go with brand A, right? So if you notice this column right here, or this row, sorry, not column, is going to be equivalent to the, uh, the probabilities of the people going from um, or stay going to A, staying at A or going to A, and this one is going to be going to B or staying B, and then these columns all add up to one, right? These are the probabilities for people using A and people using B. So um, you can also write this, you can also draw this another way, pictorial, put it yeah, using a picture, right? So if this is brand A, you can do a graph, and so you have this, and then you have, right, this is 70%, uh, right? 70% they're going to go there. 30% go to brand B, and then you have 80% that stay at brand B, and 20% that go to brand A, right? And this is called a transition graph, and likewise, this is a transition matrix. And basically, either way it represents, just shows you how the, um, the Markov chain is going to, uh, the probabilities of going from one to the other. Anyway, and this is what I was talking about earlier with the, uh, with the, it has to be independent, right? If you estimate it goes to A, and they switch to brand B, all the probabilities stay the same. They don't change. Like there's, then once they're brand B, there's still an 80% chance that they're going to stay at brand B and a 20% chance. It doesn't change each cycle. The probabilities are always the same. So this matrix never changes. Um, let's see. So then basically what you do, once you have a transition matrix, you're going to have an initial vector, right? Is called x zero, and um, let's say for the survey that they found that 110 people preferred brand A in the first week, and 90 used brand B in the second week, right? So um, a couple of typical questions for a markup matrix. It's going to be like how many people after one week, and so what you do, you take your transition matrix, which is just um, so x, so one that the first iteration, right, is going to be 70, 30, 20. 80, there we go. And then you multiply it by your initial state vector, right? Because that's going to tell you the probabilities, or, the, or it's going to divide the things so that you know how many people are going to be there. Right? So that's just going to be 0.7 times 110 plus 0.2 times 90. And that's going to be how many people are using brand A, right? And then you have uh, 0.3 times 110 plus 0.2. 8 times 90, and that's going to be how many people use brand B after the first iteration, and if you just do the math, you end up with 95 people after the first week are using brand A, and 105 people after the first week are using brand B. And so it kind of looks like eventually everybody's going to be using brand B, right, because more people are coming from brand A, and going to brand B that are going from brand B to brand A. But actually it turns out kind of the thing, the whole steady state idea, there's actually a fixed probability and they're going to settle on a certain number of things way down the line after like infinitely many iterations or whatever. It's going to, it's going to converge to a point. So um, a couple things to notice, right? Uh, X sub 1 is equal to Px, or the probability vector, or the probability matrix, sorry, so the, times the initial state vector. So this implies that uh, probability, uh, or sorry, yeah. x sub n is equal to the probability matrix times the state vector n minus 1. Also, if you notice, x2 is going to equal x, or probability of x times 1, right? And this, so this is going to be equal to p times p x sub 0. And so you end up with x2 is going to equal to uh, p squared x0, right? 